Shout of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. you we praise you we thank you for who you are in this place you deserve the glory the honor and our praise this morning father we thank you for another day we are here god to give you worship to give you honor and to give you praise and this morning daddy we lift you on high we lift you because you are god all by yourself father as we enter into your gates with thanksgiving this morning god and into your course with praise father we thank you for being here with us this morning we thank you because 
because you are the I am that I am this morning. Let we forget about ourselves, God, and we remember that you are God all by yourself in elevation this morning. Father, we pray for everyone that is sick this morning among us, my God, and we declare your healing powers, Father, to visit them in their homes this morning, my God. Lord, we declare your glory over us this morning and we thank you God for this is the day God that you have me made my God and we will rejoice and be glad that you still sit on your throne Father, yes, Father Lord yes, we pray yes. this morning God that you are the I am that I am God you are the God of Isaac Sharak Meshach and Abednego Father Lord not even a touch of the fire could touch them so we declare that every arrow this morning that the enemy shoot against elevation it will never touch us katura basutu rika sunde kapari ekosai and we declare this morning father over your daughter and her family this morning that whatever is akuturia sunday we declare my god strength upon her this morning father we declare strength over their family this morning we katura bakasataria rapaka sunde kapari Rika ta 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 ya, rapa ko sa taria, mazupa ka paria, zipa ka paria ka ta ya, rus ka turi ka ta ya, rika sutur rapa ka sa ta ya, rapa pa kutu, rus ke toria sa ta ya, rus ke toria ka ta ya, rukutu rapa ka ta ya, rapa ka su ta ya. Father, we declare your fire, God, just as Elijah, he called for fire. We declare fire makutu marus ketori ataya ruku satarabai riba ku sataya. We declare God. The heavens declare your glory over us, and your word said, Father, that you are God over us, and we acknowledge you this morning. Shedo robo ho sanda rabai marus ketori eka sanda rabai riba baba kutu raba sanda mazupa kaparo boko saya ruku satu ribiando sataya raba bakutu raba sanda mazupa kapari eh zepa kuria kataya ria seto raba haya riba kusi araba haya ria shekori ataya ria katuri sataya marus ketori haya ria seto ria Forget about who you're standing beside her and let us pray. Shatata Katai, Rakata Tatai, Rapa Katai, Rapa Katai, Rapa Koto, Rabe Katai, Rio Koto, Ria Katatai, Rapa Katsutu, Rebe Katai, Rus Keto, Rio Koto, Mazupa Kapai, Mazupa Kate, Rico Toto, Shatu Katai, Mazupa Kapai, Zepa Rus Keto. Mazutaria Zetoria Katai Marus Ketoria Satai Shekoriando Robohosai Zepariende Rebe Korea Satai Zituria Kandu Saturia Hai Shedo Rebe Kosanda Rabahai Ziparus Ketorienda Rabaha We thank your Father We thank your Daddy Shede Rebe Korea we thank you, Father, for He being here with us. Let us give God a praise in this place. Let us worship God in this place. Hallelujah. Let us worship God in this place. Let us give Him a shout of praise in this place. Let us praise God like there is no tomorrow. Let us praise God like there is no this evening. Shekora basutu, Rio kosa taraba, Riba ba 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 kutu, Riba ba shekora bahas. Hey, da 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 ba kusataya. We 
We will now just go straight into the reading of the word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do what you want to do this morning, Daddy. It is not a Bakuria Kotorabaha. Ruth Ketoria Kataya. Riba Mose Come with all of your glory, Jesus. Come with all of your glory, Jesus. Breathe upon our hearts, Jesus. Yes, come on, go there. Come on, take us there this morning. We want to be where you are. Take us there. Come on, he's here. Just worship him. He's here. He's here. He's here. Shut up. Holy 
You are holy God. Here we are, Father. We give you a praise. Jesus. Thank you, Daddy. You never leave us nor forsake us. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. We will now have the reading of the word. Glory to you. Psalms 26. When you, from beginning to end, uh, when you reach, you can we get an amen? Are we, de- are we there? Okay. So Psalms 26. And verse 1 says, Can we all stand for the reading of the Lord's holy word? Thank you. And it reads as verse 1 Judge me, O Lord, for I have walked in mine integrity. I have trusted also in the Lord, therefore I shall not slide. Examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try my reins and my heart, for thy loving kindness is before mine eyes, and I have walked in thy truth. I have not sat with vain persons, neither will I go in with dissemblers. I have hated the congregation of evildoers, and I will not sit with the wicked. I will wash my hands in innocency, so will so will I compass thine altar, O Lord, that I may publish with the voice of thanksgiving and tell of all thy wondrous works. Lord, I have loved the habitation of thy house and the place where thine honor dwelleth. Gather not my soul with sinners, nor my life with bloody men, in whose hands is mischief and their right hand is full of bribes. But as for me, I will walk in my integrity. Redeem me and be merciful unto me. We read 12 and last together. My foot standeth in an even place. In the congregations will I bless the Lord. This is a partial reading of God's holy word. And we honor it by saying. Hallelujah. You can be seated. Is anyone here for the first time? We welcome you to Elevation Church, and this is a church that prays a lot. You are free to pray worship as you are led. Amen? Amen. On behalf of our prophetess, we believe that we will see you more often. And if you are not, if you don't have a church, you are free to worship with us. Amen? We welcome everyone who is always with us. Give yourself a big clap this morning. Anyone have a testimony? Chantal. <laughs> Come, woman of God. Good morning, everyone. Um, I have two testimonies. I was supposed to give one um, about a month ago. So last month, when I was here, uh, prophetess, I don't know if you guys remember when prophetess came down the aisle and she touched me and she started praying over me and started uh, speaking against low self-esteem and doubt and fear and she also mentioned promotion. So um, after I left church, like a few days after that, it was a Sunday, one Thursday, the Thursday after that, I was just sitting down at work, um, you know, and I was preparing to go home, 
And then I got an email out of the blues that I was promoted to officer. I did not apply for anything. I didn't go on any interview. And I just got promoted out of the blues. And I just want to thank God and thank God for elevation because I noticed that ever since I recommitted my life to God and I started coming here and I even took the Christian ministry course with Prophetess Beckford, I noticed that my life has taken a whole new shift and I just want to thank God and thank him for placing me in my assigned place. Um, another testimony, I don't know if you guys recall when we were at Westminster Plaza, it was May the 26th, um, if that's a specific date, um, it was one Friday, and Prophetess sent a message in the group, um, let me read the specific message, um, <laughs> um, the specific message she sent a message in the WhatsApp group that we should take our passports because God is going to open doors for traveling. And I recall that night, that same day, um, I took up my passport and my child's passport and I came to church with it. And then a few days after that, I applied for both of us visas um, I got a late embassy date, which would have been this month. That was from May. I applied a few days after that. I got a late embassy date. Um, I was a bit disappointed. Come here and say, God, I so long you're going to take for give me the little blessing, like months down the line. Anyways, um, I did come to church last week, Sunday, but I was told that um, Prophetess was praying for visas and open doors, and she was just praying and stuff like that. Um, so I went to the embassy this week with my child. Um, we got through with the visa. So God opened doors. So that is my testimony. And I have more testimonies to come. Right? To come. Amen. Look what God has done. Amen. It's never to enter into a prophetic church and take it for a joke. Never. Is there any more testimony? All right. Come, man of God, you can. Hallelujah. Good morning. Bless the name of the Lord. I love worshiping God. Ah, uh, this testimony I'm going to share because I'm a lot of person. I don't think even my wife understand. Um, there was a period in my life when I hit below zero and I wanted was to hallelujah get back from where I was to where I need to be. I remember about five months of because we have a bridal room where I used to worship where I worship hallelujah and I stayed there for nights Nights on my face, just groaning when there was no words left. Hallelujah. And I, 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 I prayed, hallelujah. I prayed and I prayed and I said, God, this has, you have to turn something. You have to turn something because I, I couldn't understand at the time, but I said, God, I'm going to seek you nevertheless. And I see God turn some doors open. I see God turn some doors open. And I cannot help but to share this song. Hallelujah. Mighty man of war, Lion of Judah. I bow down and worship you, mighty man of war, lion of Judah. I bow down and I worship you.
I mean Jesus Christ well. Uh, so pray me up, hallelujah. Pray my strength because this road, uh, hallelujah, is not easy to stand uh, as a man in these uh, times, hallelujah. And so standing up for righteousness uh, as a man uh, is not no be everything because only real man serve God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Mighty man of war, lion of Judah, we bow down and worship you. Yahweh, Yahweh, let us stand. Come and do what no one is. the man of God speaks he said he laid on his face for days because he wanted God to answer I don't know what you are believing God for but we're going to pray for a minute and put on our prophetess it doesn't matter what storm clothes may rock the ship of yours never ever think of throwing in the towels let us pray Riba kasuturie kasanda rabaha ze papa ruske tore be kasataria nda rabaha raba baba kusatore be kasatarabaha riba baba baba kurie kasataria rapa kasotore be kasatai raba kusanda let us pray katu rebe kasatai riba baba kushato raba sundai ze pakuria kasata riba Sanda kapai, riba kuturi ya katai, raba kushe kore be sandai, ruske tori ya kasatai, mazupa kapari ya ha, zepari ya kotori be sandari ya ha, ria katori be kotori be katai, raba baba baba kuturi be satai, ruske tori ya katai, ruku shatora ba satara ba ha. We are gonna show three hallelujah. And the last one, Marco Rebe Sanduri Ekoto, our woman of God, our prophetess, our pastor. The woman, the woman, man, the Lord has put over us. She Korea Sandai. We are gonna shout in here like never before. And every Jericho was in our life. At the last shout must come down. Marco Rebe Sandai. One, two, three. Shout! Hallelujah! One, two, three, shout! Hallelujah! This is our last shout. And we are going to shout. Are you ready? Mazupa Rusketo. One, two, three, shout! Hallelujah! Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I love the Lord. Tell somebody else, I love the Lord because he first loved me. Turn, turn to the back or turn to the front of someone else and say, I love the Lord. There's a song that says, Pass me not, O oh gentle Savior. Here Come on, just lift your hands with your eyes closed. Yeah. 
Let's do, let's do Savior one more time. Savior, blessed Savior. in the house of God while on others thou art calling do not pass me by hallelujah I honor God who is the father and the head of my life and also the head of this house so I honor him put your hands above your head and just welcome your father <laughs> hallelujah Hallelujah. I welcome everyone once again. I know you've been welcome before, but I welcome you all. Welcome to the Elevation Church. For those who are watching with us online, we welcome you as well. It's good to have you worshiping with us online this morning. We send, uh, we send prayers this morning to all the persons who were not able to make it. We're praying for Pastor Alicia. She has the flu. We're praying for Auntie Chantal, husband. So we're praying for quite a few persons just keep them in your powers as we uh, as we have today's service amen amen I want to share with you today on the spirit of prophecy the spirit of prophecy so let's go to Revelation 19 and verse 10 we're going into Revelations 19 and verse 10. I'm going to do just one verse this morning. And I want to share with you on the sermon topic, the spirit of prophecy. Now, the scripture says, and I fell at his feet. I fell at his feet to worship him. But he said to me, see that you do not do that. I am your fellow servant and of your brethren who have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Father, this is your word. Come and manifest your word. Manifest yourself among us. Let me decrease that you can increase in Jesus' name. Amen. I want you to put your hands together. Make welcome my husband and son, uh, Pastor Sadiqi and Jehan. We honor and we salute the man of God that uh, is doing an awesome work for God in this place that we're also able to be here week after week. Amen. Amen. All right, so I want you guys to preach with me today as we do this uh, spirit of prophecy. I want us to understand first and foremost that uh, the spirit of prophecy, as the scripture says, the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus. Uh, I know some persons would expect, maybe the first thing I would say is uh, the spirit of prophecy is telling what the future holds or what is about to come, or the spirit of prophecy is a futuristic prediction of something that is to come for some persons the spirit of prophecy is a read up of somebody's business but scripturally and the right terminology I'm giving you is the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus it is really the testimony of the birth of Jesus it's the testimony of the ministry of Jesus and it is the testimony of the death the resurrection of Jesus Christ and the final thing is the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of the work and the role of the Holy Spirit within the church and within his leaders. Now, if the spirit of prophecy is the testament of Jesus' ministry, then the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 1 and 14, it says, 1 Corinthians 14 and 3, it says, for the gift of prophecy is given for edification, is given for exhortation, and it is given for comfort it means that the primary 
role of prophecy to the church and this is for all those who are young prophets who are coming up and not just for the prophets but I believe that every believer in the body of Christ every believer is prophetic why because your mouth is prophetic the Bible says there is life and death that's in the power of the tongue and you can speak something over yourself that will cause the word to manifest whether it is something good or or whether it is something bad and so the fact that you speak something and it has life and it has death it means that what you have spoken is indeed prophetic so then this helps us to understand in first corinthians 14 that if the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of jesus and that the gift of prophecy the spirit of prophecy is given for edification for those of who are writing for edification exhort and for comfort it means that when the spirit of prophecy comes it is to bring hope to those who are bruised the spirit of prophecy is to bring life and encouragement it is God's architectural design that, the, that when the believers in the body of Christ is feeling down, is feeling discouraged, that when the spirit of prophecy comes, it does three things. It comforts the children. When you get a prophetic word, it should bring comfort to your spirit and it should edify your spirit. To edify your spirit, it means to strengthen the believer. So it means every prophetic word that you get it should strengthen you spiritually the third aspect of the spirit of prophecy is it is for exhortation and the word exhortation it means to stir up the believer so if you were bruised and you were hopeless and you felt discouraged like God was not there with you the moment the prophet or the minister or even you yourself begin to say I prophesy over myself I prophesy over over your life it means your spirit is not being stirred up by the spirit of God that you can stand assured that Jesus Christ is with you so here's a perfect example in Matthew chapter 1 one of the one of the primary prophecies we see throughout the scripture is the prophetic word of the coming of Jesus Christ and this was the prophecy that Mary who was a virgin would bear for the child Emmanuel whose name is Jesus and so if you understand the text the Bible said that and, and the angel of the Lord came unto, unto the angel of the Lord came unto Mary Mary and said you are going to have a child but here's how the spirit of prophecy works the Bible said that angel uh, 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 Mary rather began to question how is this even remotely possible she said our uh, angel of the Lord uh, I'm not touched I'm still a virgin which means this is very unlikely to happen I haven't gotten married as yet so how is it that I'm going to carry a child but nevertheless she received receive the prophetic word but that's not the difficult part the difficult part was the man that who she was about to be exposed to had not yet proposed to her so here's the tricky part about this uh, Joseph was now obviously sitting in a corner how is it Akim I'm about to marry this beautiful woman but she's pregnant for another man If Joseph was Jamaican in 2023, he would say, no, a fool you would tell me for. Am I telling the truth? I take a big one for fool, don't. So with all these questions, the Bible said that uh, uh, Joseph went to sleep and the angel of the Lord visited Joseph by dream and said to him, do not be alarmed. Why? Because he said, but after, this is Matthew 1 and verse 20, he says, but after he had considered this, the fact that the Bible said after he considered this, he considered how can Mary be pregnant? But I've not slept with her. How can Mary be pregnant? Is Mary being with someone else and telling me that she loves me? So after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, 
Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife because, the, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit and she will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name of Jesus because he will save the people from their sins. Uh, understand that when Mary got this prophetic word, nothing about it makes sense to Joseph. What am I trying to say? The spirit of prophecy came through the angel of the Lord to encourage Joseph because there are times where God will give you a prophetic word that will make no sense and people around you will begin to question the word. How is it that you're telling me that God is giving you a prophecy that you're going to do this and you're going to do that? I know what you're saying, but this doesn't make any sense. But hear me the prophecies of God doesn't always make sense to you but if you can hear what God has spoken if you hear what God has ministered to your spirit he's telling me to tell you today he may not have sent an angel as he sent an angel to Joseph but he's saying do not be afraid and don't you consider this because it is I God that have given you the word have you ever gotten a prophetic word that you had to consider and question the word because it don't make sense? As a matter of fact, a lot of times you get a prophetic word, nothing about it makes sense, but to add on top of what doesn't make sense, after you have gotten the word, it seems like all hell is breaking against your life. And this is why the spirit of prophecy is coming to encourage your spirit that you should stand still and see the salvation of God because the spirit of prophecy is not to make you frustrated. It's not to make you condemned. The spirit of prophecy is to give you hope. The spirit of prophecy is to give you hope and assurance that the spirit of God is with you and that he intends to do great and marvelous things for you. As much as the word that God gives to us sometimes does not make sense, the spirit of prophecy is a powerful tool that can transform us into the image of God, that can transform us into manifesting in the promises that God has spoken to us. Can I give you another one that doesn't make sense? I'll give you scriptures. In Genesis 28 and verse 9, write this one down. Because God is about to give some of you some prophetic word in this season. I believe that this is the season that the spirit of prophecy is being released over the church. And this time, unlike any other time, Brittany, the prophecy that you're about to receive is not one that you're going to carry for a year or three years. Because some of you have been carrying a prophetic word and you've had this word for a mighty long time. And so the Bible says that hope different makes the heart sick. Why does the heart become come sick because you've had this word in your spirit for a very long time but where is the manifestation so in Genesis 28 and verse 9 watch this I'm showing you the power of prophecy I'm gonna read a few few verses the, in, the, in, in verse, from verse 1 down, it says that Abraham was minding his own business and the Lord came and paid Abraham a visit. Now this is what the Lord said unto Abraham in verse 9. He says, where is your wife Sarah? They asked him, there in the tent he said. Then one of them said, I will surely return to you about, the, about this time next year. And Sarah, your wife, will have a son. Turn to your neighbor and say, you're about to give birth to something. Tell somebody, this time next year, you're about to give something to something that is great. But watch this. Now Sarah was listening at the entrance of the tent 
which was behind him. Abraham and Sarah were already very old, and Sarah was past the age of childbearing. So, capture this part, so Sarah laughed to herself and thought, after I am worn out and my Lord is old, will I now have this pleasure? Then the Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh and say, will I really have a child now that I am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? Ask a neighbor again. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Is anything too hard for the Lord? I will return to you at the appointed time next year and Sarah will have a son. Now this is how the spirit of prophecy works. Here is God saying to Abraham, I know that you're older, but I'm prophesying over your life that this time next year you're about to have a son. But here is God for Sarah. The Bible says Sarah laughed because what kind of prophecy is this that you're giving to me have you not considered the fact that I am this old my husband is 75 and I'm 74 and you're telling me that my my womb not she question do you not realize auntie Chantel that I am worn out she said I am worn out and my husband, my Lord, is very old. But this is what I love about the spirit of prophecy. The spirit of prophecy does not consider what your age is. The spirit of prophecy does not consider your qualification. The spirit of prophecy does not consider who you know. The spirit of prophecy does not consider whether you send the application in or not. Know that Auntie Chantel shared her testimony. She said, prophetess, you said I I will get a promotion but then she didn't send out any application for the promotion but somebody saw it fit her manager saw it fit to send her email and say boom hold a promotion now auntie Chantel is probably sitting down but me never apply for a promotion I'm gonna understand so when the, the spirit of prophecy comes upon you it defies every odd surrounding your life when the spirit of prophecy comes, am I helping somebody when the spirit of prophecy comes it doesn't hear what anybody says it overrides the procedures and the protocol of man because the spirit of prophecy it is the testament of Jesus and Jesus is the king of all kings when he speaks even mountains has to tremble when the Lord releases a word everything that he has spoken it is going to come to pass so this is why Sarah laughed she didn't understand the spirit of prophecy. So she laughed and said, how is this even possible? So God has a prophetic word for some of you, even some of you online. God is telling you that you're going to go to college and you're going to do your degree and you're going to get your master's. But some of you are laughing and the people who are hearing the prophecy, it wasn't Abraham that laughed. It was Sarah that laughed. There are people that will hear your prophecy and they will laugh behind the corner and the closed door doors because they're wondering how is it that this will ever happen or this must be a joke some people hear your prophecy and them say this must be a joke how you mean me I go college nobody in my family not go college how you mean I'm going to have a child and I'm almost a hundred years old how you mean I'm going to build a house and every time I go to NHG they tell me no how you mean I'm going to get married but every time I get into a relationship something happens the spirit of prophecy is overriding the odds the spirit of prophecy is overriding the no's is Overriding the rejection when God releases a word, it has to come to pass. So then, the spirit of prophecy is a technology of God that brings things from the spiritual dimension into this realm. Can I say that again for those of you who are hearing me? The spirit of prophecy is really a, it's a technology. That brings things from one realm into the next. It pulls things from the spiritual dimension into this physical realm. It brings hope to things that are hopeless. In other words, 
this natural realm that we live in is always a delayed reality to the spiritual realm. Because everything that takes place in your life in the now has already transpired in the spirit. Some of you are already living in your dream house. Oh, Zapades Kapaladosia. This church is too quiet. Oh. Some of you are already living in your dream house with your wives and your husbands. Some of you already graduated from college. Some of you already, some of you are in Jamaica in 20 West Avenue. But in the spirit, you are already in New York. Because something in the spirit of prophecy already transpired in the spirit. Your physical man has just yet not stepped into it yet. So when the spirit of prophecy comes, it grabs a hold of something that is futuristic and it releases the word into the now when the word comes then you wait for the manifestation but that's why you need faith faith must be applied because that's why faith says for faith is the substance the substance of what is in the spirit and it is the evidence of what is there but it is not yet seen and touched with the natural hands Makes sense. So faith tell you that it is substance. Anything that is substance is tangible. Anything that is evidence is proven. It means it is a proven fact that you're rich in the spirit. It's a proven fact that everything that you desire, there, there is evidence for it. But this is how the spirit of prophecy works. When God releases a word and the spirit of prophecy goes forward, it has the ability to change the very formation of things. So when, when, when Sarah got the prophetic word that she would bring forth a child, she laughed and she questioned it. Why? Because her womb was not in the place. But the spirit of prophecy now has the ability to shift and align things into place to accommodate the prophetic word that you receive. So wherever there's no womb, Shannon, womb will come. Some of you don't understand prophecy, you know. You think that prophecy is just prophesying something and two weeks it come to pass. No. The spirit of prophecy is so powerful that wherever things are not in alignment, it has the power of God to begin to shift things around and into perfect alignment. That the word that has gone forth, it will make room for it to begin to manifest. So if I tell you that you're going to have a baby, then I'm telling you, and you tell me you don't have a womb, I'm telling you by prophecy see that the womb will come and then the baby will come a couple of years ago I prophesied to this lady in Portmore many years ago in fact and I said to her why are you pregnant she was I, I, it seemed that the when I told her the word, she said she's been trying to get pregnant for a while. I said to her, Brother Delroy, I said, woman, why, why am I seeing you pregnant? She said, prophetess, I don't know what you're talking about. I said to her, I see baby in your belly and I see two of them. At this point, I just started the prophetic and I had no idea what I was saying. And she said, prophetess, it's not possible because we've been to the doctor over and over, Minister Peter Gay. They said, based on the fibroids I have, it is not possible. I said to her, listen, go back to the doctor and have them check again. The lady called me when she went back to the doctor the following week. And she said, prophetess, I don't know how this is possible. But the fibroids are no longer there. And the reason why I've been so sick, the babies were there. But somehow, they were hiding behind something. Y'all don't understand. When the spirit of prophecy comes, it pulls things into alignment. So if I tell you, you're going to buy the house. I don't care about you not having money. That part is not God's problem. I don't care about NHK or the bank constantly telling you no. That is not your problem. Your problem is to hold the prophecy and say, God, I don't know how. That's why the Bible tells us it's not by might nor by power. It is by the Spirit of God, which is the Spirit of prophecy. Serving God is not difficult. If you have the word and you know the word, it's not difficult. 
He said it's not by might nor by power. Meaning it's not by what you can do with your might, your strength or your power. But some things are by the spirit of God. God will sometimes give you a prophetic word to test your faith. Because sometimes your prophetic word will not seem to align with your finances. How am I going to start a business? And I don't know where the money is going to come from. Home if you apply to university by faith, I'm going to see where the money going to come from. Like you want me to look like a fool. No, you have to learn to step out on your prophecy sometimes by faith. It's not by might nor by power, but it's by the spirit of God. Because wasn't it God that sent Ezekiel in Ezekiel 37? He said to Ezekiel, I have an assignment for you. I want you to go down to this quote unquote valley. And I want you to do the work of God down there. That is the prophetic word. But Ezekiel goes down to the place that God sent him after exile. And he, when he saw what he was about to, he expected he was going to reap. When he looked, he saw nothing but a valley full of what? Dry bones. So then, make a rationalize it. Or oh, you're going to give me a prophecy. And you're going to send me to do an assignment. I want to reach down there. It's the complete opposite. So sometimes when God gives you a prophetic word, it seems like the reality is the exact opposite. Because if God says, I'm going to give you a promotion, and then suddenly your boss starts fight against you, this is a sign that what God has spoken, it is going to happen. But what God wants to do is to test the level of your faith. Because as long as you carry the spirit of prophecy, anything becomes possible. You have to learn to prophesy over your situation. Can I prove to you how simple it is? It is so simple, Russia, that even a donkey can get it. Do you know what my motto is in the prophetic? One of my motto. If a donkey can prophesy, so can I. Seem foolish. Put up your hand if it seems foolish. If a donkey can prophesy, so can I a king. Why? Because <clears throat> the Bible said that Balak called Balaam and said, I heard that you're a prophet of the Lord. And whosoever you bless is blessed. But whosoever you also curse is cursed. So I'm sending you down to curse the people of Israel. So here is Balaam going down to Israel to curse the people. Then suddenly the Bible says an angel of the Lord appears in the way. And the donkey's eyes became open. That the donkey began to see in the sea dimension of the supernatural realm. So not only did the donkey see the angel. But the Bible said the donkey opened his mouth and began to prophesy and say haven't I been good to you master then why would you take us something and strike me as a good good donkey then what am I saying if a donkey can prophesy then so can I now this is why the Bible declares that when Ezekiel went into the valley of dry bones he said God I don't know what is this you're giving me he said God can these dry bones live but God said I'm not understand what you ask me let me ask you about the question can these dry bones live because if this is if this dry bone ask your neighbor do you have dry bones in your life do you have dry bones in your finances? Is anything dried up in your life? Because some of you are asking God, can you change my story? Can you change my situation? But God is asking you the question. I feel like I'm helping somebody on Facebook. Y'all are questioning God. Are you going to change my story? The devil has been after me month after month. But can you turn something around for me? And God is saying, Peter, get tell me what going on. God is just sitting somewhere waiting. Peter Gay, just tell me what you want to do. Akeem, just tell me what go on. Come on, somebody. Brother Delroy, tell me if you're going by the horse or not. Because some of you are waiting on God to tell you. But God is saying, you tell me. When Ezekiel heard the word, the Bible said Ezekiel, God said to Ezekiel, all right, if you believe it, I want you to prophesy it. Some of you are waiting on a prophet. But God is saying to you, can you prophesy over 
something that is dry. Jesus is sitting down, putting the responsibility into your mouth. If you can open your mouth under the spirit of prophecy and prophesy a thing, it shall come to pass. You're waiting on God and God is waiting on you. That's why a locked up mouth can't receive anything. That's why a silenced mouth without a worship and without a prayer, it can't change anything. When you go into any prophetic church, never be quiet, open your mouth and worship. Because the way that my angels work, when they're moving, they're looking for anyone that is worshiping and releasing the word of God. Why? Because angels hearken to the word of God. It is the job responsibility of angels. Wherever the word of God is released, they're coming to see what the word is saying. It is their responsibility to cause manifestation over the word of God. So when you get up and prophesy, I prophesy I am blessed. Wherever the blessing is because you release the word of God the angels have to bring it into manifestation when you prophesy I prophesy over my life that I am the head and never the tail I prophesy wheresoever the soul of my feet shall tread I shall possess because you have spoken the word of God now the angel that hearken to the word will come and say alright let me see how I can bring this word into manifestation let's shift the algorithm let's turn around some things let's reset the things that are in your job who can I move what can I move to put things into place that you can become the head so it was simple God said to Ezekiel prophesy over the dry bones and perhaps Ezekiel was saying prophesy over the dry bones you mean it's that simple tell your neighbor it is that simple because the scripture says Ezekiel said the Bible said as soon as Ezekiel said I prophesy immediately the Bible said that the four winds of the corners of the earth began to come from one direction and another and immediately there was a sound there was a rattling of the dry bones you mean to tell me all along all I had to do was open my mouth and say I prophesy every devil in my bloodline and then you're dead by the fire of God you need to tell me all I had to do was open my mouth and say I prophesy promotion over my life I prophesy increase over my life I prophesy my house I call Do you know how many of us prophesy over our lives daily? Boy, I'm a salty man. I'm a salty man. i bad lucky man. And these are the prophetic words that we release over our lives every day. Your bucket, your bucket to your salt. One bad thing happened and we sought and we start cursed with self. That's why the Bible says there is life and death in the power of the tongue. So then the spirit of prophecy is a technology that changes the formation of things. The dry bones that were dead, the moment he prophesied over the dry bones is the moment the formation of the bones began to change. Life began to come back. This is why I said that in, in 1 Corinthians 14 and 3, it says the gift of prophecy is the comfort. Eddie fire and to exhort which means when the spirit of prophecy goes forth it brings life to something that was dead it brings hope to something that was hopeless it changes the formation it changes the location when the spirit of prophecy goes forth everything concerning a location everything concerning the jurisdiction everything concerning the algorithms everything concerning the systems in the spirit and the earth realm 
well. It begins to turn in motion. Uh, things begin to put in place. Why? Because the spirit of prophecy has gone for it. Tell your neighbor, learn to prophesy. The spirit of prophecy is always to bring hope and life. This is why Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Why? Because he came that we may have life and have life more abundantly. Anything attached to the spirit of prophecy, which is Jesus, is life. That's why he tells us that you shall not die, but you shall live to declare the word of God. Because if the spirit of prophecy breathes through something, it is alive. So when you put the spirit of prophecy upon your finances, it has to live. If you put the spirit of prophecy upon your marriage, it has to live. Why? Because when the spirit of prophecy goes forward, it commands the winds of God, which is the ruach of God, to breathe into something that is dead. This is why when Ezekiel prophesied, the Bible said the winds came. What is wind? It's either pneuma, it, wind is either pneuma or ruach, which is the breath of God. When the breath of God comes, it gives life to something that was once dead. So it is simple. When you prophesy over something, it brings it back to life. Prophecy is never to kill. If something is released and it harms you, that's a curse, not a prophecy. If it brings you nothing but frustration, something is wrong. If it brings you nothing at all but frustration, loss, and all things are bad, it's not God. Because prophecy is not for, it's not for condemnation. It's not for control. There are some prophets that will prophesy over you and it's nothing but control and manipulation. One of my mentees is probably watching. She said... Her pastor prayed for her, Pastor Beckford, and said, I'm about to release a blessing, and I prophesy so and so, but the blessing you're about to get, if you don't testify about it, you can't keep it. If you don't testify, you can't keep it. And if I prophesy $500,000 to you, if you don't sell back 100000 into my life, you lose everything. <clears throat> and here's the biggest one. If I prophesy to you and you leave my church tomorrow, you lose everything. Bro, if you don't want to come back here, that's your problem. That's not mine. I can't stop you from not coming back, can I? Unless I'm going to tie a rope on your foot, Brother Delroy, and say you can't leave. What gave me the power or the authority to tell you? If I prophesy over your life, Auntie Chantal, Auntie Chantal, if you say you're not coming back, you lose your visa, you lose everything. That's not a prophecy, that's a curse. I did, I did deliverance with one young lady. She was wrapped up and tied up in curse and manipulation. And I prayed for her. I brought her to deliverance. I said, listen, if you keep going to this place, they will finish you. She got deliverance and she went right back. She's no longer living or serving for God. Because they believe when we're casting a devil out, if a devil is in this woman, God forbid, if this woman has a devil and sister Donna doesn't have one, when I'm casting the devil out of her, I can cause it to manifest and go through she. That's spiritual witchcraft. And these are things people practice in so many churches in Kingston. I'm amazed. Listen to me. You have to know God. You have to have a relationship with God. The spirit of prophecy is never to control or manipulate anybody. It's never to rob anybody. If you receive a prophetic word and it does not point you in the direction of God or it does not afford you to worship God, then something is wrong. Every prophetic word you receive should point you back in the direction of Jesus. Because he is the spirit of prophecy. And all prophecy comes from him. The spirit of prophecy, it surpasses accuracy. The spirit of prophecy is the vehicle through which manifestation comes as well. What am I saying? You don't use accuracy. 
to validate something and say, yes, this is prophetic or this is a prophet. Because anybody can be accurate these days, to be honest. <clears throat> anybody can read up your story and read up your life and tell your stuff. I'm not, I've now come to a place where I'm not fascinated in telling people what's going to happen tomorrow. What's your age and your telephone number is. All of that is gimmicks, to be honest. If you don't carry the spirit of prophecy, not only will you not be able to give accurate information, but you will get the information and there will never be any manifestation. So then when a prophet speaks, not only will the information be accurate, but something must literally begin to change to make space, room, or capacity for the manifestation to begin to happen. This is why I said that the spirit of prophecy, it captures things from the spirit dimension and manifests them in the natural. I know people who are carrying prophecies. That w these prophecies didn't come from God. And they've been holding on to it for years. Here's one of the biggest ones. It is very common for prophets to say, you, you're called to be a prophet. And you have a prophetic mantle. Why do we do that? Because people, are, people begin to liken and take on to us when, when we prophesy and tell them, you're called to be a prophet. I know this woman that was told she's called to be a prophet. And she has quit her job. The woman leave her job. The woman could no longer attend to her husband in certain ways. She became broke and hopeless. Why? Because she's waiting for the manifestation of the prophecy to manifest her. But she was never called to that. There's a book that is called... There's a book that is called Growing in the Prophetic by Mike Bickle. Read that book. It's free on Google. There's a prophet that went to a, a young man. The young man has a music store. And the prophet said to him, I prophesy in the realm of the spirit, I prophesy and I see musical instruments. And I prophesy that you, God will use you to play music all across the nations. Here is what can happen. The fact that a prophet tells you you're called to play music across the nations. This man can easily get up, leave his job, and try to get opportunities to play music all over. When he closes everything that he has to play music, what if no one books him and invites him to play? The prophet said, I, I see music, musical instruments and I prophesy you're going to play music all over. The reality was the guy had a store where he sold musical instruments. And the actual prophetic word was God was going to give him multiple stories all over the world. Not that he would play all over the world. So there's a small, small amount of information that has become tainted and miscrewed. And it twisted and altered the man's entire destiny. Do you know how many people have seen men who said, I'm not going to work. Men who were married. Pastor Beckford, can I go there? I've seen men. Who said I'm called to be a prophet? I'm enough for work, I'm a prophet. And the wife and pity them hungry a yard. And them not call for being a prophet. You may be tell me, say, if you call for be a prophet, the God who call you now provide for your family. And you pity them so they're not hungry and wife's going to kill them. Well, because God takes care of those whom he calls. Where there is a vision, there is sure to be provision for that vision. The man decide me not work. Me I wait for call for preach. The man not get no call for preach. The man not call for be no prophet. We have to be so careful. That's why the Bible says, judge all prophecies. Judge the spirit. Because if it's not the spirit of prophecy and it's not coming from the Holy Spirit, then something is off. And what some of us run after is accuracy. As long as the prophet can call your name, you did it. Pan your yite up. I hear some prophet to come to Jamaica. And when he prophesy, I'm calling him name and tell your phone number. Boy, I'm one. Oh, I go on in my life. I have to do that. 
Wasn't it Paul and Silas that when he entered town, the Bible said in Acts 16 that a young girl that operated in divination uh, said, you two are servants of God and you're coming to so and so. Paul said, you saw right and you spoke right. You're very accurate. But what I'm concerned about is not your accuracy, but is this the source of the information that you're saying? Because prophets can speak or quote and quote prophets can speak, but where is the information coming from? You have to judge prophecies. Prophecy is supposed to make you feel encouraged and blessed and comfort. But sometimes it can sound too good. And not every prophecy will make you feel good. And not every prophecy will sound good. Sometimes it's to bring correction and rebuke. Some of us only want to hear that which sounds good. Tell your neighbor, judge the spirit. Tell somebody else, judge the spirit. If it does not point you back to God, then something is wrong. I'm going to do something this week by the grace of God. I'm going to release a prayer, a couple hours of prayer. We're going to pray, oh, we're going to listen and pray to this prayer for seven days, and we're going to prophesy over our lives and watch what God is going to do in the month of October. Because the Lord gave me a vision and He spoke to me, and He said, In the month of October, the prophetic word is expect sudden manifestations. He said, In the month of October, because the tenth month is the month of complete order and completion. Did you know that number 10 is completion and divine order? He says, In this tenth month, everything that I have begun in you, can I prophesy? He says, Every good thing that I have begun in your life, I will will see it through to completion and this is the 10th month if God gave you a word get ready for the completion if God gave you a vision get ready for the completion if God said I'm going to move you up into greater things get ready for the completion we're not just saying something but I'm pulling on the spirit of prophecy and I believe by the power of God that it is already done So what we're doing is we're praying over something that already exists. When we're praying, we're trying to pull it now and birth it in the natural. Because we're not praying over something that is just wandering somewhere out there. Or something that doesn't exist. I am pulling the evidence of your promotion into the now. I'm pulling the evidence and giving you the substance by faith. That your college fees paid off. Your business is expanding. Your church is growing. I'm giving you the evidence of what was spoken in the spirit. Because if prophecy releases something that's already in the spirit and brings it into the know, then it means that some of us are praying the wrong thing. We're constantly praying, will you do this? Oh God, can you fix this and will you ever do this? It is already done. How can you pray and ask God, God, will you give me a house? Can I come out of Grand House? That is already done and taken care of. So then your prayer is not, your prayer is not being channeled the right way. That's why the Bible says we pray, but we pray amiss. Because you're praying the wrong prayer. You can't pray over something I've already given to you. If I ask my husband for money. But he secretly already put it in my purse to surprise me and give me. Babe, I want money. I want money. I'm not nagging him and saying, will you, will you, will you? And it's already done. There's some things that God has already released. That the Bible said Daniel kept going to God. I need blessing. I need blessing. I need answers. I need answers. And he was constantly going to God. But what was the problem? It wasn't that God didn't release it. His blessing was already released. But it was captured in the second heaven. The Bible said the prince of Persia held on to his blessing so he couldn't receive it. Some of your houses just swinging in limbo in the spirit. Waiting for you to arrest and contend. Sometimes you have to learn how to contend over your prophecy. You have to pray and pull it into the now. 
So now you have to pray. Pray for your destiny. Help us. Pray against whatever principality. Whatever spirit of hindrance, whatever spirit that wants to hinder me, that wants to limit me, that wants to deny my access, pray against these things so the prophecy can manifold with ease. I shared on Friday night that when Jesus got into the boat with the disciples, he said, let's cross over to the other side. And while they were crossing over to the other side, the Bible said a great storm rose upon the sea. I'm almost finished. We don't keep church long here. The storm rose upon the sea. And they became frantic. Man, I got them start bawling and fret. What going to happen? We're going to dead now. So they woke up Jesus. And when they woke up Jesus, Jesus said, what is the problem? They said, the water is in the boat. We're trying to throw it out. We're going to sink. We have to get rid of the water. Jesus said, all right, listen, be quiet. He goes and he turns the spirit of prophecy, which is Jesus. He turns to the wind and he said, peace be still. So what the spirit of prophecy does, it gives you prophetic counsel and direction that tells you instead of you focusing on the water in the boat, you need to sink. It directs you to the source of the problem. The problem was never the storm. It was the wind that was behind the storm. Some of you are focusing on why is my husband this and my husband that. You need the spirit of prophecy that will tell you that the spirit behind the husband the children won't listen. It is not the children. It is the spirit of disobedience. So then the spirit of prophecy it gives you godly counsel and advice. What do you do so that there can be manifestation I'll tell you something in all of my 16 years on earth <laughs> in all of my 31 years on earth I can count on one hand the amount of people who have ever prophesied to me one hand. I'm not so open for prophecy. Some people come to church. I've literally got, and let me not say this. I don't want you guys to feel bad. Some people go to church only because they want prophecies. I went to church once and there was this one woman. I didn't prophesy to her. But she weighed on me. She look for me and she open up her eye and I start feel her sorrow and sadness. And now she has a prophetess, call me, call me, call me. Prophetess, prophesy, prophesy, prophesy to me. And I say, all right, come, can you have bad mystery? Come. And I prophesy to her. But I'm not open. My husband is worse. I think since I've known the guy since 2014, maybe he has gotten two prophecies. Two. Why? Because he knows the spirit of prophecy. Because he knows the spirit of prophecy. He doesn't need another prophetic word. Because if he needs a word, he can talk to God himself. We have met major prophets who have never prophesied to him. I've met some of the biggest guys in Jamaica who have never prophesied to him. They just look at him and say, all right, man of wisdom. And maybe that's it. Sometimes you have to be careful what you open up your spirit to. Because prophets will look at you and they will size you up and know who you are, where you are. And if they look at you in the spirit and they can tell that you're small, small and this is the level you're at. Anything they tell you will get you excited. This is why they get some of you to give your big seeds and offering and nothing come out of it. Because they tell you what you want to hear and then it excites your spirit and it's, it's easy for you to give a seed. This teaching many of you will not sow into. Something that blesses you, edifies you, and teaches you how to move. But if a big time prophet comes and prophesy and tell you, ah, your auntie is Sister Mary uh, Sophia Johnson, and by Wednesday she's going to send documents for you to get your visa. By the Thursday you will get your visa, and I see you going on the airplane. Your seat number is 20A, and you're going to sit right at the window, and they're going to give you biscuit and Coca-Cola to drink. By the time you land into USA, I see God opening doors and so and so, but in order for you to get it you have to give 20,000 Lord God sister let me 10,000 you borrow and you beg and you sow it 
Am I lying? It is better you teach a man how to fish than give him fish. People don't want to be taught. They want to be spoon fed day after day after day. I am not your pastor. I'm not your pastor. I get babies, but you can't remain babies forever. See my baby there, and if you remain a baby, something is wrong. I have to take him to the doctor. We can't be Christians and children of God and we're babies. For 20 years, you're still a baby. You came into Christendom as a baby at 20 years old. And now you're 45 and you're still a baby in the spirit. And you still want to be spoon fed. Some of us are 30 by age and we're 6 by spiritual age. Our grace has not grown any at all. If we're taught, church was boring. But if we were prophesied to, oh God was moving today. Still on breast milk. So then the spirit of prophecy, it leads us to God. It leads us to knowing him or who he is. So we're going to pray over the next seven days. I'll post something on YouTube sometime this week. We're going to pray over the next seven days seriously to it. And I'm believing God to break generational curses and to bring manifestation into our lives. The last thing I'll say is, what God is going to do on some of your lives, the spirit of prophecy that is coming will come in one of three levels. The prophecy some of you are about to get is going to be an individual prophecy, which means it's going to alter your individual life and set you up the way God wants to set you up. Some of you, your prophetic word is coming on a corporate level. The word that God is about to give you is going to shift you that corporately, men in great places, the Bible says, and your gift will make room for you and take you before great men. Some of you, the prophetic word that's coming up on you is going to shift you into the corporate society where God is giving you favor among great men. And then the third one is uh, the prophetic word that is coming on some of you is going to be on a national level. Write this down. There are three levels to the prophecy, the prophetic of God. It can be individual, it can be corporate, or it can be international. One word can shift your jurisdictional location. One word can shift you in the spirit, where you're now in Jamaica, but in the spirit you're in Canada. And in seven days' time, something shifts, and oops, you're out of here. One word can align you into where God wants you to be. Come on, let us stand. Zapra to kuzente levranda ek. Zo brada rava hasataya. If you have a relationship with God, if you know Him, if you're connected to Him, then the spirit of prophecy lives within you. And if the spirit of prophecy lives within you, we have to do so much more than we're doing now. Your homework is simple, simple service today. Go home. Get into the Bible. Pull out all the prophetic words. Write them down. Every day you get up. Get up at least 30 minutes earlier. Begin to prophesy this over your life. Be careful of, the Bible says, be careful for adult jesting. No more salt. No, none of that stuff. My mother used to have high blood pressure. Probably that's why my head hurt me. No, we're not speaking any curse over our lives. We're not receiving any generational curse. Any, uh, anything from the bloodline. Anything from the umbilical cord. Anything from the ancestral line. We're prophesying and we're speaking life. And we're going to release the word of God. The Bible says angels hearken to the word of God. If you need angelic help, you need to begin to release the word of God over your life because wherever the word of God is angels will come and dwell we're going to pray for one minute should I prophesy to everybody quickly I can we pray and go yeah or nay 
your year is weak. I, I can go home, you know. <laughs> Let's pray for one minute. Let's pray. Zada da brahush in the rabahai. Zatole breka santa labraha. Come on, just welcome and worship him. If you want me to prophesy to everybody, just welcome and worship him. We have about five minutes to go. Zambra deske paladosia. Shetele branda kapaladoska. Lampatoske pi librehosh in the ribia savaya. Riba delebeko sata. Limpre telebeha. Limpre telebre kataramasutu rihanda dabaha. Zoke telebrehosh ataya. Mantele be koto ramasatai. Sadia la mande ke palado savaya. Father, we worship you, God. We magnify your name. We magnify your name, Jesus. You are the Son of God. You are the rose of Sharon, the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. You're the fairest of 10,000. Oh, Zabadia la brocoto zivantaya, la papantele beko shanda dabaha, li bababa shato ribika shanda dabaha. Come on, 30 more seconds. Worship him. I feel the spirit of God coming. Mando koto rabasata. Come on, there's a shift about to happen. There's a shift that's about to happen. Mande Kepaya. Your story is about to change. Your story is about to change. Your testimony is coming. Your change is coming. Mako Zabadia. Reba Baba Dada Baho Sekita Labandia. Jeprentele Mandaya. 10 seconds, give him all that you got. Give him all that you've got. Zaraba koto zivanda. Ika do raba kato ziprende ketaya. Manze ke patai zimpra dosi. Shipro to ramanda katai zibadia. O raba kasan. name in Jesus name touch that young man around the back the angel of the Lord says you're first come in the middle Zapratos Kepaladosia in the spirit this is what I see I see an angel and I see a demon the demon is very upset because he couldn't have you ever since you were in the mother's womb whilst you were in the mother's womb you could have should have died because purpose has been on your life even since your mother's womb as a result, there has been a fight against the men in the bloodline. And you should have died. So this devil I see is upset. But there is an angel that has been assigned to you. That has been your strength in the Lord. Because when the devil could not have taken you out by gunshot... When he couldn't have taken you out by sickness, then he tried to play on your mind. But God said you couldn't have killed yourself. Does this make sense to you? He said you couldn't have killed yourself because purpose is on your life. In the next six months of your life, watch what God is going to do. Everywhere there is, that's your wife. Everywhere there is a struggle. Do you have children? Is this a boy? A boy. The boy that you have, I see the name Samuel. 
the reason why the Lord has anointed you and has placed purpose on your life because what God is going to do or what God wanted to do in your bloodline it began with you and now this teaching and this grace that's on your life will pass on to your son because God wants this thing to continue as a, as a legacy in your bloodline your son will be very musical how old is he? very musically inclined pay attention to him in the next six months the Lord says everything that you have struggled everything that has been a struggle and a delay the Lord says I'm setting you for greatness in the next six months I see him doing something concerning a house there are many things that I see God doing but I see God doing something concerning a house and the Lord says I'm giving you divine settlement settlement physically and spiritually I see finances being completely settled in the presence of God that you will not have to lack us I see you in the presence of God talking to God I am the man of the house I am the one that should provide I am the one that should set certain things the Lord says he has heard your prayer and your cries and he says I'm about to bless the labor of your hands he says I'm blessing the work of your hearts I see favor coming on you even as David this is the favor you will receive somebody's just going to call you suddenly and make a recommendation for you in the spirit and I see great job doors and opportunities and contracts coming to you what do you do with your hands you're a chef I see a contract coming there's a reference somebody will fall in love I see somebody just fall in love with something that he does with his hands and I see a contract coming that will be a huge blessing for you. May international, is it okay if he leave you for a while and come back? Have you traveled? Are you, are you about to travel? He would love to. I see an international door being opened for him to go work and come back. As this door is open for you to go on contracts and to be favored by the Lord. By the time you come back, by the, by the time you come back, I see the Lord setting you up with your house and everything you desire for God to do. He says, I'm doing it. That's the physical part of it. The Lord says that he will bless. Have you, you've considered? Have you considered? I've heard you sing. Are you a part of a church? Two churches. Are you a part of a church? Okay. The Lord has used for the Lord has used for your husband, for your entire family. But I see your husband being, I see you being used so greatly in the spirit. God wants to use you. Have you ever formally considered uh, singing like one of those competitions or anything? Never. I see God putting your voice out there. And I see people calling you and putting you on flyers and concerts. Watch and hear from my word today. That this man of God, if he is in the right church and with the right pastor and the right people that will identify with his gifting. I prophesy that within the next six months, six months it is. I see your picture and your name being on flyers and you're singing at concerts and so on. So, And when you sing, the Lord says you will not just sing but I see people being healed people are about to be healed of wounds and trauma your singing is going to be a testament a testimony of the pain and all that you have gone through and so the Lord says when you sing many will be healed and delivered even men that never knew God will begin to cry out to God as you begin to sing for every pain you've gone through every rejection you've gone through every I wish that my life was not like this and I wish my father was so everything you have gone through says the Lord was because of the grace that God is placing on your father anoint him anoint him let fresh fire fresh anointing 
let the grace of God let the grace of God I speak a divine impartation upon this man may his family never be the same again may his family never be the same again his finances never be the same again his voice never be the same again his prayer never be the same again I declare a divine alignment over his life a divine alignment in Jesus name what your God is going to do the blessing is coming to your house is about to be crazy hallelujah hallelujah who's next come quickly let's do this very quickly come just come in the middle come it's two in one how old are you 26 are you in college what are you studying I see the Lord bless in both. Do you have family overseas? I see an international door being open. I see both of you going on a work and travel experience. But when you go on this work and travel experience, whilst that is being prepared, I see an international door being open with a family member. As a matter of fact, if it is possible for you to apply for international scholarships, I see... Where do you study? At what college? UA. I see, I see you studying, but this university I see you at is not in Jamaica. God is going to shift something concerning these two. I prophesied a few years ago to a young lady. I said to her, I see you studying medicine. And she said, no, prophetess, I'm going to college. I'm studying to be a teacher. I said, no, I see you studying medicine. She said, I don't like medicine. I don't understand it. It doesn't make sense. I said, well, if you do it, God will open doors for you in Canada. She said, doesn't make sense. I said, okay. One year passed, I got a call from an international number. She said, Prophetess, I don't know if you remember me, but you said something about medicine. I'm in Canada studying to be a doctor, and I'm here on a scholarship. I said, may the Lord bless you. This is what I'm saying to both of you. There's a double grace that's on your life for international doors, and God is make, going to make you so great. When you land in the U.S. of A, I see the Lord raising you up and putting diplomatic status on your life. I see you serving on an international board of committees for international black students from Jamaica and I see you implementing something that even students back from home will have the opportunity to be able to travel and study because God is giving you so much wisdom and grace to put things into place that you can help others who are less fortunate that do not know of the opportunities that are out there so hear me today by the spirit I declare that fresh grace will come Come, I declare that financial help, financial help and favor may God bless both of you like never before. May God favor you, may God favor you. And as you serve the Lord in humility and grace, with the humility and the grace that's on your life, the Lord says that I will use both of you. Even in young women and youth ministry, the Lord says I will use both of you. Whatever you do for the Lord, do it faithfully and humbly, and you're going to see how God will elevate you. Come back and testify what God has done. Come, come, both of you, come. Do you know me? Huh? You don't. Where, you know me? How did you guys get here today? Okay, 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 praise the Lord. You both are Christians. No, man of God, sir, if you give your life to God, there's a powerful call of God that's on your life. Mark my words and hear me well today. There's a call of God that's on your life and he wants to use you. This is not the first time you've been told this. Don't run from God. God wants to use you and he wants to elevate you. 
There's a de there are decisions they are in your life currently. There are decisions that you have to make. And had it not been for God, you wouldn't have been here today. By a small, by a small, small, small inch, God has spared your life. And he said, I've saved you. Do you know someone by the name of Jason? No one by the name of Jason. Do you do business? Within your business, I, there's an angel that's in this house, major, major for business. I see God elevating your business and giving you new ideas. Ideas even in the sense where you will try. Well, I see an, a business where it's even international, but there are some decisions that you have to make where some legal matters are concerned. Be careful who you speak and who you share certain things with. I'm still seeing a Jason, but the Jason I'm seeing is someone that is being fed information concerning your business and what you have to do. Be very careful who you share things with. The hand of God is upon your life for wealth and for greatness. And even concerning your children, everything that God is giving you, what's your name? Damien, everything that God has given to you is so that there can be a legacy for your children. If this, if this man, Damien, serves God, he's going to be so great. God is looking for people that will serve him, that will not just be people that serve him within the church. But God, I believe that God wants to raise up the Joseph prophets in this, in this season. That understand business, wealth, dominion. How to be strategic about certain things in the earth realm. And if you serve God, that's you. Why aren't you a Christian? I feel like I know these people and I don't know where I know them from. Do you want to give them a chance? Do you want to give God a chance? You sure? What do you do? What do you do? Okay. Give your life to God. There's so much purpose and grace and God has great plans for you. Whatever business it is that you have, I see face products. I see female hygiene products. But if you give this to God today, I see you with, I see you with a shirt with your company brand on it shirt and as you do this I see God I see God lifting you in such a capacity where there's an angel that is here for you and for you I see um see I don't know if you see them at sunrise or the TVJ one but I see TV I see a TV channel being opened up for one two persons where you can go and talk about your business God will build you in such a way where you will have your own store and you will have people working for you this thing will become so great that you will begin to hire people that will come in because the space that I see the space I see you with it has additional rooms that someone that does uh, eyelash and 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 eye bros can come in and rent because you already have the space so by the time you would have uh, subleased these rooms to these people you don't even you don't even have to worry about the rent because those who are within the business with you will cover your rent and all the money you make from your your products will go into you buying your car and your house serve the lord the first vehicle you will buy will be a nice BMW. I prophesy this. God will bless this, this, are you a couple? God will bless you so great. And if you're a couple and you want to serve God, may we marry you. I will put a ring on it. I will help you. So you can serve God and serve him rightfully. Do you want to give your life today to God? Repeat after me. Say, Lord, save my life. I love you. And today I'm making a decision. Serve you. And not to run anymore. I know it won't be easy. If you help me, I will do my very best 
to live for you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You can go back to your seat. Someone, Peter Gay will take your number and we'll pray with you. Hallelujah. Who's next? Let's go quickly. We have five minutes. Hallelujah. God bless you. What's your name? I'm Karen. Karen, the Lord says I'm with you and he says to tell you that you will no longer have to cry. So in the spirit I see you. In the spirit I see you crying. What's the age of your oldest child? You have one child. How old is that child? 23. Where is she? She's at church. The Lord says to tell you concerning your daughter that he's, he's about to bless your daughter very, very, very great. Her life is about to make a complete U-turn so she will come into what God has for her. Because one of the things that you have constantly been praying, you're here for your daughter. You have been constantly praying for your daughter because your daughter is praying, if I can be blessed and come into certain things, then I can be a blessing to my mom. And the Lord says he's going to bless your daughter and he's going to bless your house. Tell your daughter to get ready because even in the next three weeks, I see three, even in the next three weeks, the Lord says that great doors are going to be open for her. So I release the favor of God upon your life. That desire that you have for him and that hunger you have for him. I declare that you will encounter him in your prayer. You will encounter him in your prayer time. You will hear him. May her eyes begin to open and her ears begin to open. Let there be a refreshing upon her spirit and strength for the journey ahead. I thank you for the financial increase and the promotion that is coming over her life. I declare that spiritually that you're taking her to a next dimension for the desire that you have for God. He says, I will elevate you to a greater dimension in me. The Lord says, tell her, get ready for greater dimensions. He says, I will reveal many things to you concerning your life and even concerning your family. He says, don't worry about, there's a noise and there's a little bit of confusion. You're asking the Lord about something. He says to tell you that small, that small matter, what I have for you is something that is so great. He says, get ready for change and get ready for increase. Bless her Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Who's next? Come quickly. How are you? Okay, where's your mother? How is she with her health? There was a lump in her breast. I don't know your mother, but that you came and the Holy Spirit said you're here for your mother. Tell your mother to do a seven day of fast and anoint herself. I see where there was a sudden attack against her health. Because she have been praying, the enemy couldn't have prevailed. But there is an attack against her health. This has the lump gone. The lump that is there, the doctors want to tell her that it was a misdiagnosis and it is something else, but it is not. Tell your mother that God says, whose report shall you believe? I use you today as a point of contact. Lift your hand. I use you as a point of contact. And I speak divine healing over your mother. I cancel untimely death. I cancel every untimely death. Because this is what the devil wants. To attack your mother. And then there will be so much chaos and so much that it will now become an attack against you so that the smoothness you have and the peace you have and things that are going well for you even with school he wants to turn everything upside down because things have been too well for you but today the Lord says that is cancelled somebody just say it is cancelled say every attack from hell against my life is cancelled in Jesus name I declare that you will complete and you will complete well I declare that you will find favor and you will be found by favor and that great and goodness the goodness and the greatness of God will go with you I cover you I cover your studies and I declare that even doors of opportunities even for employment will be open I see a job opportunity coming for you where you'll both be able to study and also work and this will be of great help the Lord says I'm setting 
sending help. He says, I'm sending help. And he says, your name is going to be great. When you come out of all of this, uh, you will probably make it even by just, uh, you will just make it, you will just finish. But the Lord says, you will finish. Has anyone in your family completed college? The Lord says, you will finish. And you will finish well. And you will be great. And your name will be great. Because he has seen you through. In Jesus name. You were, your prayer was to finish well. You will finish well. The Lord says you will finish well. It is well. It is done. It is done. Wait a second. God says I've given you a start over. The place that you're in. I was praying for you last night and early this morning you you're in a place and you have a decision whether you will go left or you will go right the lord says you have gotten a start over and he now wants to establish you you now have decisions to make he says be very wise about the decisions that you will make concerning your life spiritually and even naturally so i see you studying I don't know what you're studying or training for, but the Lord says it's a start over. When you're finished, there's some people that you used to see often that you will see no more. Because what God is really trying to do that has been a complete fight is to pick you up and relocate you out of where you are. Because one of the biggest battles you have fought is based on where you are physically and in the spirit. You're easy to be found. And because you're easy to be found in the spirit and in the natural, whatever attack that is constantly being sent has always been somewhat effective. But even though these attacks have come and they have done what they should have done, even if it made you completely upset and you said things you shouldn't have said, whatever it is, the Lord says in this season of your life, I want to pick you up, root you up and put you in a place of stability, completion and divine peace. He says, I am God that is relocating you. You don't have to worry about anything. Finances will not be a problem. Our family will not be a problem. The Lord says, I'm trying to pick you up and plant you by the rivers of waters where your feet shall not be moved. He says, there's still purpose on your life and ministry. Oh, prophetess, don't ask me to do anything in church. And... and and all the questions but God says purpose is on your life and he says there's greatness within you and there is greatness upon you for the ministry that God has given to you he says it's bigger than elevation church it's bigger than you praying in elevation church he says the ministry has so much to do with your son and your daughter he says pray over your daughter I cancel every plan of hell against your children I cover your daughter and I cover your son your children will not be a statistic your daughter will not I place a blood coverage over your daughter I declare that she will do well get your daughter in church let her come to church and serve and pray and read the word of God. Because your daughter has greatness ring all over her. But the attack that she's facing is the peer pressure that she's around. You have a good daughter that loves you. A good daughter. But it's the company and the peer pressure. I cover your family. I cover your children. God wants to pick you up and pull you out into a whole new region where it's just you and your babies. And he said, even the husband will come because who you think is husband is not even husband. I don't know anything about your life. I literally don't know anything about your life. But he says, I want to make you great. I want to make you great. May the spirit of God bless you. You will study and you will do well and you will lack for nothing. You will move into a nice home. 
a very nice home your son will have his room your daughter will have her room and you will be blessed you will go to the supermarket and you will buy whatever you want to buy you will decorate your house you will go to work in the mornings you will buy your small little car to begin with and you will build from, from there and you will be great the Lord says to tell you there's nothing you cannot do there's nothing. Don't lower anything. Don't. There's nothing you cannot do. Hallelujah. If you have to leave, talk to my husband. I'm almost finished. Hallelujah. 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 Take out your offering. Just come with your offering. As you come with your offering, I will. Are you planning to travel soon? There's an international grace of God upon your life. I see you plain and I see you plain. As you play, I see whatever you do for God now, do faithfully. Because what God is getting ready to do for you, it will be on a very large scale. I see you playing with the biggest of bands and at the biggest of concerts and stuff, especially in the Caribbean islands. And the Lord says he's about to connect you with someone that is very great. And I see you going on a tour. Europe is on the list. The Caribbean islands are on the list. God says he has great things for you. I declare that you will find favor financially and that you will find favor because of the great men that you will come in contact with. Everything you need in this, God says it is done. It is done in Jesus' name. I've been praying for you and I'm still praying for you. Come with your offering. Whatever you had to give God today, if you can double it, double it for whatever you want God to do for you. Come. Put this over here. Can I have that oil? Don't leave. Let me wait, wait, wait. Can I have that oil? Stand right here. Spray it. Just spray it in my hands. I anoint your hands for increase. I declare increase. I declare increase. Even over your clients, even over your business, I declare increase. Whatever you're doing, if you can put it out, social media, advertising, start advertising, start putting yourself there. Because I see great promotion and great increase coming over your business and over your house. I declare you're blessed in Jesus' name. Your word for today is increase. Your word for today is increase in Jesus' name. Is the same word for you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Hear me and hear me well. If you can have faith in God, everything I would have said, watch our online, our husband, Ray. <laughs> if, you, if you can have faith in God, you will see God will do so much greatness for you. For the Lord says, the season you're coming into is a season of a start over. He's rebranding you, not just in the natural, but in the spirit. He's rebranding you and he's putting you out there. Don't give up on anything that you have begun. The reason why you are where you are, because God wants to pick you up to relocate you from the physical place that you are. Whenever there is greatness that is coming, the devil will come in. Whenever greatness wants to come, the devil will come and he will try to throw you off and distract you. All of this you're experiencing, the Lord says it's nothing but a distraction. In the Listen, by January of 2023, between now and January, you're going to see such a complete turnaround things are literally going to make sense for you things are going to make sense for you and as i said to you before one of the things i want to do is not just prophesy but just to sit and give counsel and step-by-step -step guidance that's what i will do for you amen come do devotions with them do devotions, read scripture, read Bible, sing songs with them. I cover you under the blood in Jesus' name. Amen. Are you a Christian? As you, when you came through the door, I saw you in the spirit. And the Lord says, this woman is going to be great. You've been questioning, you've been talking to God about where you are. Because where you are is not where you want to be. And you've been talking to God about your purpose and your life and what decisions to make. I see, I see you at a crossroad and I see you making a certain decision. 
the decision you make, let it, let it bring God glory. Let it bring God glory. When was the last time you've traveled? You just came. Are you leaving again anytime soon? You're not leaving. It's funny. Because I don't see her in Jamaica. How long have you been overseas? 18 years. It is funny. I don't see this one in Jamaica. I see major doors being opened for you overseas. I see major doors being opened for you overseas. I see God settling some documents. One of the documents I see is I see a house settlement where some documents are concerned. There are some things you should have committed. There are some things you should have received, but you haven't received those things. Were you married before? You are not, do you have children? This is your daughter? The enemy has stolen some things out of your hands that you should have come into. How old are you? There are some things you should have come into that you haven't come into. But today, by the Spirit of God, I prophesy over your life that everything that you did not come into, I declare that now is your time. I declare now is your time. I declare there is a key that is dropping in this family. The next blessing you'll have is car and house. And it's going to happen so quickly. And this is your word, Chantel. Even before you come, come hold my hand. My hands are very hot. The next testimony you will have will be your car. The Lord says, don't be afraid. He says, don't be afraid. I will be with you. Your car and your house is coming. The Lord says, get ready. For me, this is your season. Everything is happening for you. I release the same grace upon you. The same grace. You will buy a house. The documents will be finalized with ease of access. And the decisions that you will make moving forward. Whatever you are about to invest into financially. The Lord says it will be blessed and you will be favored in Jesus name. Amen. I declare you are blessed and you are favored. I declare you are blessed and you are favored. I see a blessing coming to your house. I see you talking to God about certain things and the Lord says, I'm about to bless your house. I see, where do you work? I see a major blessing coming to your house. There's a promotion that has been delayed for you and the Lord says, I'm going to bless your house. There's a promotion and there are finances that have been delayed that are not paid out. The Lord says, I'm doing it now. He says, I'm favoring you now. Everything that should have been released, he says, I'm doing it now. Things are literally about to make sense for you. I see you walking around your house and I see some things are being changed and are being made new. The Lord says, I'm giving you all things new. I see you repurchasing furniture and not just physically, but spiritually. I see God doing some new things for you in the spirit. I declare all things new. And all things restored. All things new. And all things restored. In Jesus name. Don't worry. The Lord says you will do work in the kingdom of God. I declare you're blessed. I declare you're favored. You're blessed and you're favored. May the Lord speak to you audibly and clearly. Audibly and clearly. Direct you clearly and audibly. May doors be open suddenly. May, door, may doors be open suddenly. May the hospitals call you. May the hospitals locate you. Even privately, I declare that you're blessed. Your finances will be blessed. And your name shall be great in Jesus' name. Is, this is not your first time in this church. You came last week. I declare you're blessed and you're favored. You're blessed and you're favored in Jesus' name. How old is your son? Do you want to? This is what I was going to prophesy. It is done. It is done. The Lord says it is done. 
in Jesus' name. It is done in Jesus' name. Go, my babies. Grace is on you for baby making. Be very active as you go. I declare restoration and grace. Restoration and grace. Whatever you have been robbed in the previous couple of weeks and months shall be restored. Your peace and your time shall be restored. Your vision shall be restored. Everything that God has spoken to you and has given you to do, he says, now is the time. He says, now is the time. Now is the time. Don't be afraid if the Lord says, it is okay for you to get a job month to Friday and steward and save financially because he says the business idea he has given to you he has not given up on it as yet he says I have not given up on you and your business as yet and I will still make your name great there's a lot of money that you will handle in the spirit so he says over the next couple of days steward well your ideas steward well your decisions concerning business and jobs and you will see what God will do for you you're blessed amen stand Father, I thank you. I thank you, Holy Spirit. I thank you. Come, Jehan. Come quickly. I declare that grace and brilliancy will rest upon you. Brilliant, brilliancy, brilliancy. In Jesus' name, say hallelujah. 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 I declare you will preach and you will be greater than your mother. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for the offering. I thank you as your children have given, I declare it shall be given back to them. I prophesy over their offering. I prophesy increase. I prophesy that they will lack for nothing. May they experience gain. May they experience a multiplication and increase like never before. May the spirit of prophecy, may the spirit of heaven and the treasures of heaven. I see treasure baskets. I see treasure chest in heaven literally be open. May the treasures of your kingdom be revealed to us in this house. I declare your children are about to testify like never before because we have seen and encountered your grace today. Bless even those who are in line. I thank you for your word of prophecy that has gone forth. I thank you it is done and it is already established and they will come into it with God's speed. Cover us under your blood. Remember the elevation church. Remember Pastor Beckford. Remember those who are sick. Remember Pastor Alicia, Auntie Chantal and all those who are sitting there. We cover them by your blood. We cancel every attack from the pit of hell. We declare devil you will back up and you will back off. We declare that everybody connected to this church our partners, our well wishers our members, I declare that they're blessed in their going out and coming in. Seal them and cover them. Train them by the spirit. Nurture them by the spirit. Let them experience spiritual growth and maturity. Your grace and your anointing like never before in the mighty name of Jesus we thank you for your grace in Jesus name just celebrate Jesus for victory just celebrate him for victory today come on clap your hands and celebrate Jesus for victory I literally see treasure chest in heaven being opened I've never seen this before, but I entered into a room in heaven and I saw a treasure chest literally opened up in the spirit. And the Lord says, get ready for the treasures of his glory is about to be revealed in this house. I declare that the elevation church is blessed and will go from grace to grace and glory to glory in Jesus mighty name. Hallelujah. As we go, may God cover us under his blood and cause his face to shine upon us. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you and see you next week.